Hello, my name is Juan Manuel Bolivar from Complutense University of Madrid in Spain, and I welcome you to a lecture Introduction to Heterogeneous Enzyme Kinetics on the basic module Process Engineering. In this lecture, we are going to learn how important it is for the enzyme kinetics the presence of one phases or several phases in contact. So the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous enzyme kinetics. In the case of the homogeneous kinetics, all the components of the system are dissolved, suspended at the same fluid phase. So enzyme, factory, product are at the same phase, normally liquid phase. In this case, the velocity of the reaction, so how fast is the substrate consumed or the product produced, only depends on the biochemical phenomenon that it is the enzyme kinetics. This enzyme kinetics, we have it expressed in this slide and through the whole lecture as a typical hyperbolic kinetics chemical is maintained. So it is higher if the enzyme concentration is higher, if the substrate concentration is higher, if the interplay with the specific constants of the reaction. However, in biocatalysis we have in many cases several phases in contact. Here there are three the typical uh, situations, liquid, liquid system, liquid gas system, and a solid liquid system. When we have uh, two phases in, in contact, we don't have just a biochemical phenomenon. We have also physical phenomena. In the sample we have here in the, in the slide, we have one phase one, where the enzyme it is located. So it is the consumption of the substrate, production of the product in this phase one. And this can be quantified with the equation that we just saw. However, we have one more phenomenon here. It is that the substrate is getting transferred between the phase two and the phase one, and the product is getting transferred in the phase one and the phase two. As a consequence of that, the concentration of the substrate, the product, and actually any intensive variable might be different with the phase one compared with the phase two. But the kinetics depends on the conditions where the enzyme is located, in this case, the phase one. So the transport of the substrate and the product now is going to have a critical influence on that because it's going to determine the specific conditions that the enzyme is catalyzing the reaction. Let's see it in more detail for typical system biopetalysis. The first, it is a liquid liquid system. We can identify first the conditions, the second, the phenomena taking place. Regarding the conditions, in our particular sample, the enzyme is only at the phase one. That means that the substrate is consumed only at the phase one, that the product is produced only at the phase one. But substrate and product are soluble, or at least partially soluble, at the two phases. So in addition to the reaction, we can identify that the substrate is transferred between the two phases, that the product is transferred between the two phases. So if we precisely identify the simultaneous phenomena taking place, we have a consumption of the substrate due to the enzymatic reaction of the phase one and transfer from the phase two. And we have a production of the product at the phase one and a transfer to the phase two. How normally we will monitor, um, the, characterize the performance of the reaction in a reactor, it is following the product concentration time course. This could be product formation at the overall volume of the reaction or the uh, product concentration time course in one phase. In this example we have here at the phase two. The kinetics of this system now depends on how fast it's produced at the phase one, but also how fast it's transferred to the phase two. 
And the velocity at the phase one depends on the concentration of the subject one that depends how fast it's transferred from the phase two. Let's try to describe it in a more quantitative manner. So the biochemical phenomenon, the enzymatic reaction, is described by the michaelis menten equation that depends on the enzyme concentration at the phase one and the subject concentration at the phase one. The velocity of the transfer of a substrate in the phase two from the phase one is described here with a classic uh, uh, equation that is the result of multiplying a mass transfer coefficient specific for the substrate and the system by the interfacial area between the two phases and the driving force. And this driving force is the difference between the substrate concentration at the phase two and the substrate concentration at the phase one. When the system it is operating under the steady state, obviously these two different phenomena equal at steady state. So when the subject and product concentrations are constant over time, the biochemical uh, phenomenon rate equals to the physical phenomenon rate. What we will observe at the reactor, how the product is getting accumulated, now depends on the interplay of these two phenomena. But it, this is the reason it's very important to identify which of them is the rate limiting step because the whole system will be balanced to adapt to the slowest rate. In the case of a liquid gas system, a very uh, different uh, uh, approach of identification of the conditions and phenomena and quantification can be made. In this uh, particular example, the enzyme is located only at the phase one, liquid phase. So the reaction, consumption of the substrate, production of the product, occurs only at the phase one. The substrate can be at the two phases. Actually, the easiest here to visualize it is at the substrate. It is a gas that has to be transferred from a gas phase, phase two, to the phase one, a liquid phase, where the enzyme it is suspended and where the reaction it is ta taking place. The product is at the liquid, at the, at the liquid of this phase one, where it is getting accumulated. So the two phenomena taking place here, it is consumption of the substrate at the phase one and simultaneous transfer from the phase two. And the product is getting produced and accumulated at the phase one. So now the real performance of the system, so how much product is getting accumulated at the phase one over time, depends on the reaction rate of the phase one, but also how fast is the substrate transferred from the phase two. We can uh, describe it in a more detailed quantitative uh, manner if, again, we use the michaelis menten equation to describe the reaction rate of the phase one, which depends on the concentration of the enzyme at the phase one and the subsequent concentration at the phase one. And the mass uh, uh, transfer rate, it is uh, described again by the multiplication of the mass transfer coefficient that depends on the molecule that is getting transferred, properties of the system, and the driving force. And again, the driving force is the difference between the concentration, the subject at the phase two, and the subject at the phase one. So what we will observe in the reactor depends on the balance of these uh, two phenomena, which is very important to identify which one it is the slowest, because it will be the one that is limiting in the balance of these phenomena taking place in groups. The third typical example in biocatalysis is a solid liquid uh, biphasic uh, system. In this case, the enzyme, it is uh, uh, located in the uh, solid, then think in terms it is an immobilized enzyme that is in contact with a liquid phase where the substrates and product are uh, uh, suspended. So the reaction is taking place at the phase one where the enzyme is getting located. The substrate is transferred from the phase two, from the phase one, and the product is getting formed at the phase one, but it is getting transferred from the phase two. But normally we will monitoring this system, it is 
the, the, the product concentration time course uh, of the product accumulated at the liquid. But it depends how fast is the reaction of the solid phase and how fast is the transfer of the substrate and the product. We can uh, distinguish two different situations in this kind of system. One first situation, it is where the enzyme it is in a solid, but on the surface of the solid. In this case, the reaction uh, rate takes only on the surface, and the physical phenomenon is just external mass transfer. So the substrate is transferred from the bulk of the liquid to this surface of the solid where the enzyme is located, and the product is transferred from the surface to the solid where it is produced to the bulk of the liquid where it is uh, moist. Again, this can be expressed in a, in a quantitative uh, manner. The reaction rate can be expressed in the, in the form of the mechanism equation, while the physical phenomenon can be expressed by the multiplication of the mass transfer coefficient by the driving force. This driving force is the difference between the substrate concentration in the liquid and substrate concentration in the solid. Again, what we will serve into the reactor, it depends on the interplay, the balance of the two phenomena. And it's very important to identify the slowest because the whole process will adapt to the slowest one. The second situation we can have in a solid liquid system, it is where the enzyme it is immobilized inside a material, normally porous uh, solid material. Uh, in this case, obviously, the reaction is taking place inside this, uh, this, uh, this solid, and it is a parallel reaction and transport by diffusion substrate, and it's a parallel production of the product and transport by diffusion of the product to a liquid phase. So what, what we will observe into the reactor, how the product is getting accumulated, how fast it's getting produced, depends on these two phenomena, biochemical reaction rate and mass transport by the In this case, the more positive uh, description of the performance of the system with the observation that we do not have just one defined substrate concentration into a solid, but a gradient. At the liquid phase, we have, yes, one defined concentration of the substrate, but along the, the solid, we have a continuous gradient of the substrate concentration. As the reaction rate depends on the substrate concentration, the velocity of the reaction also depends on the position and it's a continuous gradient to this velocity along the system. The more detailed interplay between the reaction and the transport is more difficult to be uh, described in this case. You can find further details in a lecture at the advanced uh, module, but the key uh, take home message it is that again, when we try to understand the uh, product concentration of course, so the real performance of the in the reactor of this, uh, this system, this depends on the biochemical phenomenon, so the enzymatic reaction rate, but as this also depends on the local substrate concentration at the environment where the enzyme is located, is going to depend on the interplay or this phenomena of the uh, diffusion. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, to this lecture. I hope that you enjoy.